Hey, man. How you doing? Hey, wonderful. How you doing? Good to see you. Good. Good to see you again. Man, I was just, I was thinking it was like the last two times we talked, we were like in lockdown and then right off the back of lockdown. Well, just as you were about to release pressure. Yeah, yeah. man. Seems How's like, it been? Yeah, good. Good. It's been nice to get back to life. Um, you know, yeah. go, go and see some live music again, get out of the house. I feel um, that, man. It's, I tell you what, like that, it's an old saying and it's a cliche. You, you, you don't know what you've lost until it's gone. But man, when, when there was no live music, that was depressing. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you got a double edge, right? I mean, I'm just talking about enjoying it as, a, as, you know, watching. Obviously, you can do what you're born to do. So it's like... Yeah, <laughs> no, that was, it was certainly difficult. But I'm glad that we're getting to do it now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Actually, I was going to... One of the things I was going to ask you, are you, you're going out on the road soon, right? Yeah, well, we're going out in October. We're playing a album release show in Nashville in two days. Yeah. So that's going to be like a swing for the fence evening for us. Yeah, down at Basement East, right? That's a great... As, as if we don't don't play swing for the fences <laughs> shows every time, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, a hometown show is always a, a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, um, I think it's it, it's just nice to see bands out on the road again and, and venues full and, you know, and people being able to behave normally. It's so, it's so great. But we, we don't want to dwell on all that stuff anymore. Like, we're out of it. <laughs> yeah, man. So Absolutely. I have been listening on repeat. We, obviously, we got a, a little advanced copy of the new record um, to have a listen to. Man, I've got to say, I, I said when I first listened to it, you guys know how to pick an opening track for a record because Bear yeah. Bones is such a great track. Like, I listened to it. We, we put it on and I'm like, oh, that, that guitar, that little guitar run at the beginning and then you get into it. And it's like, it sounds like a song that was recorded live in the room. Um, it that, pretty much, it pretty much was. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's one that I can imagine you guys, um, like that's a great live song. Like with a yeah. stomping and a hand clapping, like you're going to get everyone going crazy with that thing. Yeah. It works out really, really well. Um, yeah. It works out really well. And uh, yeah, I mean, the first song was a really tough one because originally when we made the sequence, we had we had this song called Off the Rails as the first song. Yeah. That's um, it. And we decided that we would make that this first song on side two. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my my other choice for the first song was Shackles because we've never opened a record with like a really down moment. And that yeah. one was so intense that yeah. I thought it would, I thought it would be cool. But we we chose Bare Bones because I think that it it's a great introduction to where the band is at yeah. the, at the moment, you know, musically and like what, what, like we're getting excited by and yeah. it felt like a natural thing to do. Yeah. And I read you guys have like talked about going a little bit back to your roots and, you know, taking that approach. I, what I like about the album though, is it's so, it, it's, it's all sides of you and you've sequenced it really well like that, because I think, you know, it kicks off with bare bones then you've got um oh what's the second one the one that uh oh, ain't unwatered down yeah ain't unwatered down yeah that, that you wrote with Rebecca and then you're like right into like a, a full on rocker like for, for the third track where it sounds like on that one you just like let loose on the solo right like that was a yeah great yeah track. and that's that's the thing is it's like we um you know there's so many different sides to the shakedown yeah. and it 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 always we feel like we're kind of cheating teaching the audience if we don't give them a little bit of of all of the things that excite us yeah uh, it, it, it fits it fits together really well like that's what i was thinking i was like that doesn't sound out of place you go like bare bones in on more down then you go to like go it's ghost rider right where it's just like a distorted fuzz guitar and everything and it's like but it doesn't sound wrong because it's still influenced by that that like bluesy yeah totally yeah. and i think i think the the way that we approach the recording of it we tried to make all of it feel cohesive and then of yeah. course the way that it was sequenced you know it's like we couldn't put ghost rider next to uh hard learned for example it, it might feel a little too jarring but so we kind of tried to ebb and flow the sequence to make it at least interesting for people who care about listening to a full album in its yeah. entirety you know yeah that's it I, I love it i love that so much thought goes into it I, we might have even discussed this last time but i love putting an album on and listening to the whole thing and i love thinking about 
the band sitting in a room and being like, right, where, where does this go? How, how do we want to open it? Like, do we want to bring it down here and then bring it back up here? It's like, it must be, I mean, it must be fun, but it must be challenging as well. <laughs> I think this, I, I joke about this with, uh, with my wife and with my bandmates. It's like, I love making records. The, the post, the post recording part of making a record, like picking a sequence, picking yeah. a title, picking the, which we already had the title for this record before we even made it, you know, yeah. but um, a lot of times it's like, once you finish the record, that's when the work starts where it's like, yeah. oh, now we have to put them in an order. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Now we've got to pick where each one goes in the perfect place. I, I was going to ask because we're, our, everyone in our band has a very strong opinion about it. <laughs> yeah. So some, <laughs> somebody's got to lose, you know? Yeah every every time right that's it someone's gonna make the final decision um shackles though I, I was gonna ask you about that one I, I was interested on how the writing went for shackles because it's like I love that guitar part where it's effectively like doubling the vocal line at the beginning did you come up with yeah. the vocal line first or and then write the guitar part around it or was it I gotta say that's the oldest song on the record so shackles probably has been around since I was like 18 years old maybe oh, no yeah. maybe 19 or 20 like when I wrote that song um yeah. I wrote it with a couple of friends of mine one night when we were hanging out and it's been a song that we've played in the shakedown live show for a long time yeah. but we've never officially released like a recording of it that that I felt like was as cool as the way we play it live so yeah. Um, yeah, it just sometimes it happens organically whenever if I can stumble on a riff that, that yeah. feels cool, it, you know, sometimes it, it's cool when the melody follows the riff and it can yeah. be especially with something like that that has so much space. And yeah, it just it happened really naturally, like way back when. And yeah. with the recording of it, we just tried to make it feel as like raw and dangerous as possible. Yeah, I think a lot of it. I mean, like I said, I'm, I, I was saying about the first track, but a lot of the record feels live. That one as well. I, what I loved on on Shackles is that is it? Are you playing it through like an octave pedal? Is it? Yeah. What's the effect on? Yeah, it sounds awesome. The guitar sounds awesome on that. Yeah, well, that you know, also, also like so. Um, I I engineered this record in my in my little studio in Nashville, and uh, yeah. I got I had so much fun dialing in all the tones and getting the drum sounds and like you know it's like I really just have been inspired by recording and it's almost made me fall in love with music even more and making yeah. music and it's in it's just the the whole process was really inspiring to me and I met this uh kid in Paris France yeah. this mix engineer and uh, I started sending him some of the stuff I was working on and he started sending me back mixes yeah. and it was like he was making it sound like louder than god some of this <laughs> stuff. And I was like oh my gosh I'm so excited to share these songs and when I heard shackles like the way the guitar tone came across in the mix i was really excited yeah it really that one really stood out to me because i, I when i heard the guitar the, the, it was the it was both things together i love in the right sort of song that kind of the guitar playing the vocal line along with the vocal so i like that but then just the tone with that like octave it would just yeah, sound... it, it's like almost insulting you know what i mean <laughs> it's not meant to be it's just meant to be insulting it's great yeah. <laughs> So I, I know I was going to ask you, I, and I do certainly, I want to talk a bit about, you know, you doing the label and the producing, but I was like, in terms of the songs themselves, and I might be off base on this, but it was like, if there's a through line to this record, it sounded a little bit to me, like there's some autobiographical stuff in there. I think Roots sounded like your journey, right? From from Texas to Nashville. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, I, and then it was like Hard Learned and Sell Yourself. I yeah. didn't know whether that was really you talking about certainly hard learned and then actually both of them, right? Sell yourself, your experiences maybe in the music industry and what you have learned and where where people can take advantage of you, I guess, was the sell yourself. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's it's interesting. I uh, I made friends with Dweezil Zappa and yeah. he, uh, he was talking to me about, uh, you know, how how you can go on Facebook and basically choose, you can target ads. And I, this is all stuff that's way above, like I'm, I'm merely a guitar player and a singer in a band. This is way above my, uh, you know, realm of thinking. And he was telling me, he's like, dude, it's pretty crazy. Like they're taking your information and selling it to anybody 
who wants to target your fans or vice, yeah. you know, you can do that. And, and, and I was like, just kind of thinking about how strange of a time it is that we live in where you could literally just go and buy someone else's fans almost. I, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so I just was walking around my house going, sell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that, that was the inspiration behind that. And hard learned was, you know, sometimes it's hard to know where some of these songs come from, but um, I just sat down and started singing and, and I've, I've always been a really stubborn person where, you know, if, if someone tells me not to do something, I'm, you can bet I'm probably going to try it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, within reason. And uh, I've always, I've always kind of had to learn my lessons the hard way. And, and, that song just kind of fell out one night and uh I that's a live recording uh and my wife Rebecca sang some beautiful background vocals on it and my yeah. friend Eleanor played the most beautiful strings and yeah. I'm really hard learned is potentially my favorite song on the record I love it yeah. that's a great song it must be it, it must be I, I think we talked a little bit about this last time as well like such a creative household I mean, I, I know, I think you and Rebecca co-wrote, right, the, the, the first track that you released. Correct, and, yeah. and, and obviously, you've got those vocals just there, if you need backup vocals, which must be amazing to have on the Oh, man. I have, to, I have to pick and choose my, uh, you know, when I'm going to, when I'm going to ask for that favor or not, but, you know, because <laughs> yeah. she's, she's very busy. And also, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to ask her to, to spend her energy on something and then me decide I don't love the song or something, yeah. you know? but um she's one of my favorite people to write with and we yeah. we write a lot of like classic country songs together yeah and it's so much fun I love making music for her especially when there's no purpose yeah because we, we both are uh we work so hard yeah. at making sure you know the t's get crossed and the i's get dotted for our own respective bands yeah. that whenever we can just make up music for fun and it's not to share with anybody it's just for us it's really uh i feel lucky to be involved in that process yeah. you know i think it's um i, I think it's great like i i listen to like when i listen to this as well and, and roots and obviously we talk to a lot of musicians for the site and it never feels to sort of inspire me and I think in, in Roots, I was listening to, to the words and, you know, you're saying that's, it's kind of like what you were born to do, the only thing I know. And yeah. it, it's when I talk to people about music and, you know, you'll hear certain people be like, yeah, you know, like the sports guys, I could have been a contender if it wasn't for my knee, you know, oh, I could have been in a band. And it, but it's, I don't think people realize the dedication. I mean, in an industry where, and I've written about this before, you could do everything right. And it still might not happen for you. Like, it's, oh, yeah, totally. Well, yeah. I mean, that's also the, that's a, that's something that I've, that I constantly go, I have to like keep that mentality in check for myself. Of course you want to succeed and you, and you put the, uh, you know, you always try to put your best foot forward and you always try to be the, the hardest worker in the room and the last yeah. guy standing and the, you know, I mean, these are all things that I strive to be in, uh, but at some point you got to go, well, what's the main, what's the biggest purpose? And and for me, it's always been about feeling joy. You know, yeah, I yeah. feel joy from music. How do I keep that alive? And and saying no to things that are going to rob me of that. Yeah. You know, it's like if, you know, especially like with production, it's like, I, I'm not, tr I've, I love producing other bands, but I'm not trying to like, just make a quick buck and make some stuff yeah. that I don't believe in. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And, it's great to, uh, it, you know, it's just a fine, it's a fine thing to, to try and balance. It's a fine line, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like another, it probably gives you a deeper understanding of, of the whole thing. I think once you're involved in production and you, you produce Lock and Pull, right? The, you've been producing on the new record. Yeah. yeah I co-produced that record with them, uh, which was just so great. I mean, it, but the thing that I love about working with other artists is yeah. it, you get to get inside their process. Like the shakedown has, you know our own way of working and our own way of communicating with each other which is you know and it can be it can go from like being incredibly inspiring to being completely like dysfunctional like at a, yeah. you know at a moment's notice and it's amazing and i love it <laughs> yeah and it's our way so like to get into a room with lark and poe or with like i've been producing a record for frankie ballard yeah. um and i just did a track for this artist zach person 
all of these artists, they all work totally differently. Yeah. And it's cool to go, okay, how can I, how can I add something, you know, yeah. or to go, I don't need to add anything. And yeah. like trying to, to find what's going to best serve the project and the artist. And, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely helped me on my own journey. Yeah. I like listening to producers talk and it's like, and you get such different sort of approaches to it, right? You get someone like um, Steve Albini here in Chicago. He's like, I don't even like to call myself a producer. I'm just an engineer. I'll, the band does what the band wants to do and I'm not really going to do anything. And then yeah. you'll get other producers who want to be involved in every little thing, you know, yeah. they go along, which is, it, I don't think it's a right or wrong way, it's probably. Yeah, no, I mean, there's really not a right or wrong way when it comes to anything that has to do with art. It's like, yeah. does it excite you? you know and and i always like to think of producers as facilitators yeah so it's like how do you set up how do you have things set up in a way to where a moment could happen and yeah. you could capture it you know and you start thinking about microphones like cameras yeah that are just going to try to catch a picture that's in focus and the lighting is good and everybody's like looks good and you yeah. know and or they look like they do and you remember them like that forever and it's like yeah it's cool it's like it's a constant game of you know uh making i love i love all the decision making and yeah i, I think i've as i've gotten older and made more music i've become a lot more decisive about what moves me and what i like and yeah um and i and i i like being able to get into a, sit, a situation where i have a strong opinion and going this is my opinion and sharing it and if it gets received cool and if it doesn't that's cool as well you know yeah yeah no, I think it must be, uh, it must just, it, it, like I say, just increase your sort of involvement or the depth to which you're involved in music. It's like a whole different thing. I, I don't think I really recognize, I have a friend here in Chicago who is, um, you know, a really good sort of producer now. Like he's been really working at it um, over the past, you know, three or four years. He went and did a course and I was around at his place and he was showing me like, what was involved in what he was doing in recording his own music. And I, you know, I'll sometimes record stuff here, but it's like, I, I've got nowhere near the depth of knowledge that he's got and just the, the obsessiveness that he's got about it as well, which I think you need a, a, a level of that to be a producer, like just that to a point. I think, I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's um, so the other thing I was going to ask you, which is obviously a big thing is you, so you've started your own label and released yeah, yeah. your own label this time. Yeah, a lot's changed since we last spoke. Yeah. yeah. So so Rattle Shake Records is it's something we've been talking about within the band for a long time. Yeah. You know, we've had incredible experiences with multiple record labels. I mean, three or four at this point, where we've yeah. we've met some of the greatest, you know, professionals in the industry and and consider them friends and been lucky to watch and learn. Yeah. You know, we're the we're the kind of band that takes notes. Yeah. This, <laughs> this worked this yeah. didn't work and um i think we're just we're at a point where we we're going we we we've always wanted to own our own masters we've always yeah. wanted to have more control over the frequency of which we release music at you know what i mean like it's it's always taken a little too long for our liking to yeah. put a record out and and we don't want to spend so long between records so we uh we said well what now's as good of a time as ever to yeah. give it a shot and once we decided that we were going to make a record and put it out on our own it felt like it really uh empowered us yeah what's been blowing me away is like as soon as we announced that we were going independent um the response from the fans was overwhelming because they all want to support because they all they ever wanted to do was support us wow. you yeah. know? they're like having to go pre-order a record from the label or whatever that's yeah. that's going back to you know make back whatever money the records, records yeah, get on the record so we're going well we want to we want to pay for the record yeah and we want to we want to hire our own team and we've hired a lot of the people that we've worked with at labels in the past yeah you know so it's really exciting and to to be able to go and cherry pick a team of individuals who are passionate about the shakedown rather than just it's a band crossing their desk that they may or may not like. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it makes, I mean, it, and it, as I listen to 
I think there are great indie labels out there at the moment. I really do, and yeah, I, I love do. reading about them. And I, but but when I when I think of like the big business of of the record companies now, it it just like with what they expect you to bring before they'll put anything in, right? It's like you need x many followers. You need to put all that in before we're even going to listen to your music, and then. If we do decide we like you, yeah, we'll promote you, but you pay us all that money back. And you start thinking, well, is that even really, do we get any benefit out of that? Like with the bigger labels, I think there are indie labels who do a great job. And I think like you've got the best of both worlds now. Like you say, you pick the people who are passionate about the band. Is the totally. intention, do you think as well to like, will you keep it just for the shakedown or, do you, or will you sign artists as well? Do you think? Um, I think, I think we're going to use ourselves as guinea pigs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's always been a, a something that I've wanted to do was bring in artists that I believe in and make yeah. records, do collaboration records, put out. I want to put out an acoustic record. I want to put out, you know, a like a, I want to go to Texas and record all of these great blues players that I grew up listening yeah. to. But could never put out a record because I think our audience would really appreciate that style of recording like the, there's not. Like, where's the modern day Alan Lomax? Where's the, yeah. I want, I want to just like share these musical snapshots with people. Um, so that's definitely a goal that I think I will work towards. Yeah. Is putting out other people's music on Rattleshake. But for now it's, it's going to serve as uh, just a tool and a home for the Shakedowns records. Yeah. Um, we, we have more music kind of, we, you know, there, there are already cannonballs sitting next to the cannon that are ready yeah. to fire. You know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. we we never stop making music, and that's always been something that's it's it's just frustrated me over time to have such a large body of work that that's finished, and you know, and then by the time someone's willing to put it out, you're two years removed from it, yeah. and then and then you don't want to go out on the road and play it because it feels like you know old news. So yeah. for me, it's just a way of trying to stay in better touch with with our art and i know that the other guys in the band feel the same way um but also we're at a point where we would rather pay for it on our on our end not take money from somebody and own it and then you the know? money that comes in in the future is yours you know well back. yeah the, then the money that comes in in the future goes towards making more records yeah. and goes towards touring and goes towards like um you know i i and i don't i don't want to come across as somebody who thinks having a record deal is a bad thing you know i mean yeah. we've signed multiple record deals and i think they all served as a valuable stepping stone to uh you know where we are now um and it makes sense for some people to to sign a record deal i think uh, one of the things that's always been frustrating to me with with uh you know with just like the the music industry is a lot of times the the industry will want you to to go a thousand miles yeah really you need to go you know or you it and if you go a thousand inches it's like well you didn't go a thousand miles and it's like yeah. dude look you can't it's like when you when you think about the big picture of like growing a career grassroots playing playing a club for 100 people yeah. then playing a club and there's 300 people or whatever like that's the goal and i think we've always had an appreciation for the journey. And I think sometimes the industry is like, if you're not at the destination from the time you start, then, yeah. then they're like, they have to move on because they have so many people on staff and they have to pay their bills. And yeah. for the type of music that we do, it's like, dude, we got to be grassroots. We got to, we got to appreciate the journey. We got to appreciate every inch that is gained. Yeah. You know? And then, and then, hopefully one day we can go cool this destination yeah. that we're at thanks to all of you who helped and also thanks to ourselves yeah, yeah thanks to you as well i think that's an it's a really interesting take on it as well i was watching a there's a uk um youtube artist called mary spender and she talks about the music industry and stuff like that and she did a um a video the other day that i thought was really interesting in light of what had happened with taylor hawkins and, and things like that and she was talking about you know for a lot of musicians, maybe some of the best times when they look back are those times when they are single-mindedly going after what they want. And they maybe are only playing in front of 100 people, but then the next week they play in front of 150 and it's like, holy shit, there's like 150 here tonight. And it's, you haven't got everything you want, but you're on the way and like you're all focused on the same thing. And she's like, 
it seems like sometimes when people get there to what they think is the end game, then they find it hard to deal with, right? Like, and you, you see that. And, and she was talking specifically around someone like a Taylor Hawkins, right? Or a Kirk Cobain, like just talking about what had happened, but and how people cope with that level of fame once they get to what they think that they wanted. It's um and it's crazy. So if you don't enjoy that trip and you get there and then it's not what you expected, that's terrible, right? Like so enjoy every minute of it. I can only imagine. But um yeah, I mean it's I can't tell you how many bands we've toured with and we've like rolled up in our van or whatever and and they're going, Man, you better appreciate these days. We miss yeah, right. that. we miss that. But they they also aren't going to hop into a van. Yeah, but, yeah, no, that point there, I was like, well, sure, we'll trade, we'll trade, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, um, where, where are you, when you, sorry, you know, I think I asked you at the beginning, you go out onto it in October? Yeah, we're doing it, we're doing a handful of dates in October, and we're, yeah. we're making, uh, plans to go back to Europe early next year and and we're going to do a lot of we're really focusing on booking headline dates in America yeah that'll be good because it's it's been a while since we've seen you in Chicago so it'll be good if you guys there yeah we've got we've got a plan to come back to Chicago so we'll we're going to be announcing a lot of dates really soon excellent and well I mean it's fantastic oh one other question I wanted to ask you because it, it was interesting to me. We were just at a show last night when someone was talking about Nashville. And I, I was thinking, like, Nashville these days, it seems to be like you've got people who now are like, no, I'm not, Nashville's not what it was. It's it's changed and blah, blah, blah. And I was really interested, like, Tennessee, the song is like a love letter to Nashville, right? So you s- still seem to be in love with it. Yeah, I love I love it. Nashville man I mean it's funny I mean even people in my friends group I've, I hear them being like oh this place sucks <laughs> yeah. I don't know what town they're living in I love I love this town I mean also I don't go and hang out like on Broadway every night or like yeah exactly I mean I, think know, that's what you see of it. I, I mean I, like for the people who are just coming and eating hot chicken like seven <laughs> times a day like, of course you're gonna think it sucks you know I mean because you, you feel awful but I don't know I think it's a great city to me any city is about you know who you surround yourself with you know that's what I love about Nashville it's not the buildings it's not the uh you know the highway system because we have too many people here for the road systems that we have but that aside some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life live here and the people who are gonna like write you back whenever you ask a question or like you know I can't I can't tell you how many uh you know, just great friends I've met and, you know, people that I consider my family, all of my like actual family lives in Texas. Yeah. But I have family in Nashville and it's like, it's, it's, I just consider it home here. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I drive around town and get nostalgic because a lot of the places that I uh, used to, you know, haunt as a, as a 17, 18 year old yeah. you know, kid with big dreams, you know, they're not there anymore. Yeah. But I, but there's, Th- those are places that's the places never made the city to me i mean it's like the places made the city cool but it's what what the people inside the places did and i think that that's something that you got to kind of keep i don't know i have to try and keep that in perspective i sure hate it whenever like you know like a your favorite guitar shop closes down or yeah, something yeah, yeah. you know and you and you have to go somewhere else but there's so many great great spots to go there's great food um and most importantly great people yeah i I love it and it, it will always in my mind i will always have it that that like thrill of when we first came to the u.s from the uk and the first time we went to nashville and i had just never been anywhere like it i remember like standing at the to waiting to cross the road and there was a speaker playing music and i'm like this whole place is just about music. And then I'm walking down the street and it's kind of depressing as someone who plays a bit of music. I'm like, this guy I see you just playing on a street corner who are a million times better than someone you'll see in a lot of clubs. And they're just playing music out on the street. And I just, I've never been to a city like that that just played music. I, I yeah, really it's great, it. isn't it? Yeah, I loved it. I loved that side of it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And that that song, Tennessee, was like, a late night hang with Caleb and Graham and you know obviously like 
we've we've all made great memories in Nashville together. And that was one of those Nashville nights that I think of. Like when I think about Nashville, I think about cooking out with your friends, yeah. sitting down, sharing songs, playing yeah. music. Hey, have you heard this song? Check this out. You know, and yeah. that's it's really inspiring to me. And it's one of one of my greatest sources of inspiration, honestly. Yeah. And just having so many venues that host live music as well. Yeah. It's just, and it's a, oh, actually, I, I, maybe I shouldn't, I, I can tell you, but I, I can't tell you who we're, we're sponsored by. But like, we're doing a trip next year for the website because I wanted to sort of raise some money for independent venues. Right. We're going to do, um, I'm going to ride my motorcycle from New Jersey all the way across to LA. Um, oh and currently we're going to video it along the way but the idea is to stop at an, indiv- an independent venue in each town along the way so we'll be stopping in nashville so i might get your tip for a great independent like your favorite independent venue because the idea is i think what we want to try and do is like interview an owner of an independent venue in, in each city and bring some awareness to what those guys do because yeah. it's so important and um, so, yeah. yeah. As I'm interviewing people, I'm going to be asking them like, "What what would you think is a great independent venue in your city?" Cool. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Well, hit me up whenever you're coming to Nashville. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. And um, so I'm excited about that. It's a year out. We've got a lot of planning to do, but it's uh, okay. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. Well, man, the the record is great. So it released tomorrow. You've got the release show, Basement East, on Saturday, right? Yeah, so I'm I'm waiting at 11 p.m. Nashville time is when it'll go live on all of the you know streaming services and stuff. I'm I'm kind of like antsy. I can't wait for yeah. people to hear it. Yeah, well, I mean, I've heard it, and like, let me tell you, it's been on, on repeat in the, the apartment, so it's um, it's gone down really well here. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, dude, it's always great to see you. I'm so yeah. happy that uh, we got to speak again. Yeah, me too. It's great to see you. Great to see you still making music. I said, hey, now you've got your own label. The last two times we've talked about those songs you've written that are just the songwriter songs, right, that you're going to release. Now you've got your own label. There's no reason not to release them. <laughs> I'm working on something. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm very excited about all that's to come. There's a lot There's a lot of music that's that's being finished. You oh, know what I mean? It's, yeah. I'm very incentivized to put a, put a period behind some of these sentences that have been just, yeah. you know. Excellent. I'll yeah, look, I'm I'll look out for it. For you. Yeah, man. Great to catch up, man. All Great this. to see you, homie. You're <laughs> on your motorcycle. Yeah, will do. <laughs> All right, man. Later. Yeah, Bye.